I look across the road and there's this geezer comes out of the kebab shop with the biggest fucking knife you've ever seen in your life. So I'm like, oh my fucking God, I'm gonna die. So I've fucking grabbed him, I've got down and I've just gone ra- straight to the floor and I've gone, I'm working, shut the fuck up, I'm working. Not one window of the coach was left by the time we got there. Leeds were throwing things at it. I've had a fucking enough of this. So you think you're accusing them? I'll be all right. Come on, me and you will have a fucking. Come on in, me and you, let's have it. James Bannon, thank you very much for coming on the show, mate. Pleasure. Mate, your book's outrageous. Thank it's you. Such such a good book. I was just talking about how like constantly I was reading through it and freaking out. Yeah. Like, what the fuck's going to happen next? What's what's Jim from Wandsworth going to do next? Are these guys going to catch? like suss you out and capture you just like the whole way through you're just turning the page just going what the hell is happening here and why is this guy not shitting his pants well it was and as i say so yeah um yeah it was it was it was a daily roller coaster you start the operation yeah you go into one of those pubs first night out night first night so I'm working, bless him, he's not here anymore, but I was working with um, a sergeant who didn't really want to do that job. Wasn't really. And in his own defence, and um, we spoke about that after, it wasn't really his bag. Um, you know, he was he was more interested in a glass, you know, and we were all doing a glass of Chablis and catching the next wave. You know, he was really into his windsurfing and he was really good at it. And um, this was you know, an operation that he wasn't, overly comfortable um and our first night out is you know he turned up looking like something out of little woods catalog it's just like fuck's sake you know i'm sort of trying you try, there is a sort of there is a style of at that time there was a style of clothing yeah and he's there in a pair of deck shoes and a pair of chinos and a fucking ralph Lauren t-shirt not very millwall just, 1980s no um very south of france <laughs> So um, if, you know, if we were infiltrating them down at the yacht fucking gang, it would have been all right, but we weren't. And um, I remember going outside and he said, I'll drive. And uh, I thought, okay. So I walked down and he's got a bright red Mark II Golf GTI with a fucking surfboard strapped to the roof. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Off to the pub. <sighs> Off to the pub. So we drive down Park Up uh, and I'm, Pretty nervous, so I'm shitting myself. Absolutely, walking into into the pub, and um, and I'm sort of you know we're walking, we're walking, we walk in, we walk up to we walk up to the bar, get up to the bar, and I'm like, uh, and he's there, and he's standing there, and he went um, two halves of lager. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fucking what? I went, well, well, well babe, sorry, right. we'll have can you make that two pints, make that. Two. I went, what the fuck are you doing drinking halves? And he's like that. Well, we're working. I'm like, fucking, you have no idea. I'm like, mate. So we get our pints of lager. And then he has this tendency, because he wore glasses, to stare. Uh, So you know what people, some people do that. Yeah. Some people just, they have a, they just stare. Mm. For whatever reason, they just have it. It's within their psyche or wherever they are, whether it's because it's a confidence thing or whatever, they, they stare. And he fucking stared. Okay, so he's staring and I'm like... In know, a Millwall stop. pub. In a Millwall pub. Full stop, of Millwall hoes stop, stop fucking staring. And it's like, anyway. Next thing, we're surrounded. Right, we've been there fucking 20 minutes. We're now surrounded. It's like, who are you? Oh, yeah, no, it's, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm Jim, I'm from Wandsworth. And I'm like, why? And, you know, why? And, it's, and then we have these conversations. And then for some reason, and I can only put this down to nerves, he just turned and looked at the biggest fucking hardest bloke and went, watch it, we're fucking Millwall. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just went, oh, for fuck's sake. It's like, you know, and I'd, I'd walked off. I'd, I'm, you know, I'm, I'd walked off and gone to the toilet and come back to all this shit. So I'd like gone there, standing there, I'm like, fucking hell, just get your fucking head, to, get, get, get your head together, get your head to, it'll be fine. Come back and then it's, it's, it's all fucking gone. It's, they're, they're surrounded. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. So we try really, really hard. Uh, and then they start questioning us. 
who are we? And I'd done a lot of research. I'd really worked. One thing I could do is find out about Millwall. So I knew about, you know, I'd done, I did my research. I knew who the players were. I knew who the manager was. I knew where players had come from. I knew who'd, who'd started there, who hadn't. I knew, you know, I'd done my, done my bit. He hadn't done nothing. You know, and we end up in this, and people, people go, I can't believe that you did that. And I'm, it's genuinely true. We end up with somebody saying, you know, they start talking about John Fashionu. Uh, who everyone knows who follows football is a, a black guy. And um, they started talking about the fact that fashion had been sold to Wimbledon. And um, he effectively, within the conversation, alluded to the fact that fashion was white. Chris did that. Yeah. And, uh, and then it just all kicked off. How did it kick off? Man? It just fucking, they just punched him and fucking was in straight in the head. It didn't, there was no fucking, oh, we're going to punch you. It just did what he did. It just kicked fucking off properly. And we were saved by the bouncers. So we were saved by the bouncers, thrown out of the pub onto the fucking thing, like, fuck off and don't come back. And we're like, right, okay. And so I'm standing there and I'm thinking, right, first night as a Millwall undercover hooligan, I've got a sergeant who thinks John Fashion is white. And I've just had the shit kicked out of me. So you get to you get to Leeds, and this is all new to you. And h- how did that go down? So we come into Leeds, and we get off, and there is West Yorkshire's finest just in a line. And you look down, and I'm walking, and I'm looking down, and there's fucking always one. There's always one that you look at and go, oh, fucking hell, the slash peak. The fucking creases in the arms of his jacket, the bald boots, you know, and the fucking stain you know, and the, the chisel jaw and all the stuff was standing there. And Millwall didn't endear themselves, I'm not gonna lie, to the to West Yorkshire's finest. Mm. It's because we got off the train and their opening song was Did the Ripper Fuck Your Mum? Oh, jeez, that is aggressive chanting. That's aggressive. But Millwall are, Millwall are famous for their aggressive chanting. They, and they still do. They, I, Every, at that time, everyone was aggressive. Yeah. It, was, it was aggressive, but it was, it was like making... The, it, was, it was just putting your marker down yeah. is the way that you would look at it. And I'm, this guy took, <laughs> quite rightly... I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe who knows? <laughs> it's just, you know, but he really did take exception to that. And, um, and he waded in. Biggest fucking mistake of his life. He waded in. And got the fucking absolute... He just waded into the middle with his truncheon and his mates, whether they were his mates or not, didn't fucking follow him. And he got absolutely battered, like properly. What an idiot. And to the point where it's like, whoa, it's like, you just, yeah, it's just, you can just see it and it's, it's, it is, it's hideous to watch. And we then got in the coaches to go to Ellen Road. And uh, not one window of the coach was left by the time we got there. Leeds were throwing things at it. So every window on that bus fucking went in. Well, you, you guys crashed down hiding? Or shitting like? myself, lying on the floor with the sergeant going, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Absolutely. We, the night before, we'd had the shit kicked out of us for, um, it, for, uh, for, for his famous comment about fashion. Who, and then the, the next day, we're lying on the floor with glass all around us on a bus that's being pelted from bridges and side streets and everything by lead supporters. So we turned up, it wasn't a fucking window left on the bus. And then we walked in and that was it. You walked, this was my first experience. I mean, I'd been to football as a kid, but nothing, you walked in and it was just like, mm. I mean, it was, it was really was quite, not uplifting is not the right word. It was inspiring. It was a Crystal Palace game where you really got acceptance into the, or you started to get acceptance into the Millwall clan, wasn't it? You know, we were outside and then one of the, one of the guys uh, got nicked and really got nicked for no, no, it was just a manly police officer who just grabbed hold of him and nicked him. And, um, and I ran and sort of grabbed him and we then, and this went fucking leg it and we ran into, a, into the crowd and we all thing and I went, take your jacket off, turn your jacket round. And like, and he had one of those green like Top Gun jacket, you know, the sort of aviated flying jackets on. Right. So I'm fucking running. I've got my jacket. So I used to wear dungarees all the time, which was I think was a pretty. So I'd wear my dungarees. So I'd wear because you're a painter and jacket. Dungarees. Well, no, I just wore them because I, there was a, the first game we went to. There was a Leeds guy wearing them, 
one of the one of the football hooligans who had him, and he looked really fucking cool. And I thought, oh, I want to look like that. So I didn't look anything Fair like him because he was like six foot three and really long. He looked great. You know, I was five foot nine, just getting fat, but it was all right because I thought I was sort of living the dream. So I had the, um, but <clears throat> they were really quick because what you could do is you could drop the bib, take your top off, put the bib back up, put your hood, put your hoodie back on, and it looked like you were just wearing jeans. So they'd be looking for somebody in a pair of dungarees, and you'd instantly be able to change your dress. Right. And the other thing is, is in CCTV, it's really easy and quick to pick someone out because nobody, not anyone else, is wearing them. Look for the guy in the dungarees. Why? Oh, he's one of the fucking main targets. Look for the guy because you'd never tell the opposing uh, police that you were uh, that, that you had undercover officers in. Right. Or if you did, you'd never tell them who they were. So you'd look for him. He's one of the ringleaders. And because then what that does is word word gets down. Watch him because he's a fucking lip. You know, he's one of the guys. He's one of the main guys. So you then get sort of not special treatment, but they, they're aware of who you are, so they're, they're keeping your eye on you, which is good in two things, really, two ways. Is one is you get more attention from the old bill because they think you're a face, for what I want a better word. And secondly, if anything disastrous ever did happen to you, you've actually got somebody who's looking at you for all the wrong reasons, but then go, what the fuck's going on here? So, but I turned round, and the Martin has ch- flipped his jacket around. It's fucking fluorescent orange. So he's gone from sort of, slipping into the crowd but we're running away from the old bill to now being this like I'm on a mountain come and save me fucking coat it's like, what the fuck are you doing so Shit. we had to get that off and I stuffed it down and anyway we got away with it and so there was a there was a, a slight level of acceptance after that one of the one of the main guys that you wanted to get in with is a guy called Paul yeah can you tell me about him and why it was important to get in so Paul run the pub uh, and he was effectively one of the main ringleaders and ran the pub and was a really nice bloke. That proper nice bloke. Um, but he would organise, you know, and was part and parcel of uh, one, one of the, you know, sort of the Millwall top boys, really, for want of a better word. And um, we wanted to get in with him. So our plan for that was we started going in there at lunchtime um, and having a couple of beers and a really stale, shitty sandwich, and then leaving in painters and decorators um, overalls. Because no one goes in there at lunchtime. They only used to go in, mm-hmm. in that pub at lunchtime because it was a, a football pub. So, And then we got in with the with the barmaids, and one was his wife and one was his sister-in-law. And ultimately, we ended up in a scenario where we just went in and went in and went in, and so we got known. So when we turned up for the first Millwall game, and we walked to the bar and everyone looked at us, the barmaid just went, Jim, how are you? It's like, what do you want? Do you want your use? You're like, yes, please. No one batted an eyelid. Smart. Because we'd done two months of quite hard work of going in there at lunch times. You mentioned earlier about the fear of also um, uh, someone IDing you as a cop that knew you. Yeah. You were actually at a game and that happened, like a, an actual cop. Yeah. So there was a guy I was in the cadets with. Um... Simon, so I was in. I was in the cadets with him, and he was. Um, he he. So he was three years. So he was three. He's three and a half years. He'd actually passed his sergeant, so he was now a sergeant. And he, I walked in, and he saw me, and this was like just the start of the next season, and um, <laughs> I'd bought everyone. I just these were there was a fucking ice cream van outside, so I bought everyone ice creams. Oh, I want a fucking ice cream. And everyone's found it hilarious. And I'm buying everyone. So we had fucking Mr. Whippy ice creams. So they're walking in fucking to the thing. And I saw him and he started coming towards me. And you know when you know someone recognises you and they're going to come up, oh, mm. Jay, how are you, mate? How's things going? I'm like looking at him and he's coming and he's coming. And I thought, I've got to do something. Otherwise, he's going to fuck everything. So I fucking planted my ice cream straight, and he's straight at him. <laughs> so I just went like that with the ice cream. I said, what the fuck's this bloke want? Funk and done him with the ice cream. It's all, so I've fucking grabbed him. I've got down and I've just gone ra- straight to the floor and I've gone, I'm working. Shut the fuck up. I'm working. And he's gone, oh, oh, oh. we've got up. And anyway, the two, bless him, the um, um, spotters, so the guys that sort of followed Millwall around, all around the country. Um, they so knew I'm, you were undercover. Knew. Yeah. yeah. Um, swooped and just grabbed me and then were really physical with me 
and then started going, you ain't going to get fucking away with this, you cocky little cunt, thinking coming down here, thinking you fucking own the place. So led me up, stuck me in. So I got nicked. And then, because I didn't see anyone until the next game, and it was like, I can't fucking believe it. I went, you fucking prick. So what the fuck do you think he's doing coming over? It's fucking, I mean, I weren't having that. Got away with it. You got accused of being a cop. They, that you thought. So they, this, was, this, was, this was Chris at his best. We'd been fortunate that we'd had um, a relationship. We'd, we'd started a relationship with Manchester coverts. So the Manchester, um, Greater Manchester Police had a team that were infiltrating Manchester City, uh, which are nothing like they were that, then with the money that they got. They were like, you know, it was still a good, they were still a good side, still a good team, but they were, um, it was a different, fan, I wouldn't say different fan base, but it was, um, they were a different club. Uh, I'm sure they probably all go. We're still the same, but it's like you know they would. It was just they they didn't have the they, the notoriety that they have got now in relation mm. to the Premiership and everything and what the players that they now got. They were still a good side, and um, and uh, and they didn't. Th- they were doing the same as we were doing, but this guy was just different gravy. The guy that was leading the uh, the guy I refer to as Rory in the book. He's. He was yeah. leading the, oh, the COVID. We're talking like mm-hmm. proper. And we're talking somebody who's like the top, top of his game. He's like the James Bond. The top of his game, yeah, mate. And properly and deservedly as well too. Had been doing it for a long time and was really fucking good at it and had all the kit. Like that, everything. They had vans with compartments in it that you wouldn't know were there. They had properties with all everything up in the, in the they had two flats with the flat above that had all the listening device. They had, they had the whole lot. Mm. And it was all being done properly, full proper fake ID and all that sort of stuff. When he saw what we had, he just pissed himself. Went, what the face? How the fuck are you surviving with that? And I went, well, we ain't, are we? He went, leave it with me. I'll sort it out. And within a week, he'd made phone calls and had conversations. And we got false driving licenses, signing on cards, you know, a little uh, drive, you know, all that stuff. All the stuff that you would need that you could just leave lying around. That you would never advertise it. You just leave it lying around. Mm. So um, we do all that. And, so you had a um, big story now, you proper. Yeah, and he um, said, so, "I mean, they 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 really really helped." But so we had a little bit. So we were with we'd been to a game, and um, unbeknownst to me, we I'd, we were doing we were I'd, we were doing up a property. So we had a property that we um, that I'd bought that um, that we were doing up. In order for our cover, that was part of your cover. That it yeah. Wasn't. Okay. So we were painting and decorating. We were going to do it up in Catford. I wasn't aware of this, but um, Chris had told them that we were doing this property up in Catford and given them the name of the road. So they changed the venue on these pages, and we said, "Why are they? Why are we going from this pub to that pub? It's fine. They want to meet in. They want to meet in a pub in Broccoli or whatever." So we went there, and we walked in, and the minute we, instantly we walked in. I fucking knew it was on top because it was just a completely different atmosphere. So they were all standing around the pool and I'm like, and instantly I just went, you're right. And he went, no, I'm fucking not all right. And I'm like, what? what? What's up? And it was like, who the fuck are you? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, what are you on about? Who the fuck are you? And I went, what do you mean? Who am I? And at that point, he's now grey. Right, Chris is now grey. And is fucking just standing there. And I'm like, well, you know we are. So I just, Chris and Jim, and he went, you're fucking old Bill. And at that point, you've then, again, like the first night out, you've got two options. You either go, run. <laughs> Which weren't an option. Because we were fucking surrounded. Or you front it out. How many of them were there? Six. Two of you, yeah. Oh, fucking proper. Any, any one of those knock the shit out, kick the shit out of me. So I'd imagine what Chris was like. He was like, you've got no chance. So I'm like, I mean, I might be, I might be, I might get a couple of punches in, but, um, and that was the fear is that, you know, because people do get very brave when it's not the people who hit you, it's the hanger, hangers on you I worry about who run in and then kick you in the head and then run out. And then the other one who comes in and stamps and jumps up and down on your head. And then runs out. It's not initially the guy because the guy lit you and then leave you. It's all what happens with all the other hanger-ons mm. who want to make a name for themselves, so they all pile in. So I just went in my head. I went, "What the fuck are you talking about?" 
did your old Bill? And I went, what the fuck do you mean? And he went, you weren't, you, you came down your house. And I said, what fucking house? He said, the house you're meant to be doing up in Catford. And I'm like, what fucking house in Catford? And he's then started, you know, that fucking house in this Glenfark Road, the house you're meant to be doing up. And I went, I don't know what you're fucking talking about. I said, what the fuck's, you know, I've turned up Chris. What the fuck's he talking about? Chris, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fucking hell. And I went, what fucking hell? And he went, the one, and I went, Catford, the house in Catford. I went, yeah, we ain't there, mate. I said, we ain't doing that. I said, why would we be there? He said, we went down there, the fucking roofers were there, they were doing, and I went, mate, we're painters and fucking decorators. We ain't going to be there painting and decorating and doing the fucking roof, are we? I said, we haven't been there. I said, we've been in Wandsworth for a week. You're fucking old Bill. And I just went, and then I, I thought, the only option here is I'm just going to have to go for it. So I just went, I've had a fucking enough of this. So you think you're accusing of old Bill, right? Come on, me and you will have a fucking, come on in, me and you, let's have it. And he's got there, he's got the fucking pork here. And I thought he's gonna, and he'd, he would have absolutely ironed me completely out because he was a really strong guy. And um, the others all intervened. No, 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 calm down, calm down. No, 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 Jim, it's fair enough, isn't it? I said, what the fuck are you talking about? So I then stormed off outside and I'm now, I've gone out of the pub, fresh air, walked out, absolutely, arse is hanging out like a windsock at this point. I'm now absolutely <laughs> shitting myself. And I've left silly bollocks in there. So I'm like, what the fuck is he going to say? Oh my God. I'm like, oh my God. Anyway, after about what felt like a fucking lifetime, which was probably only about 30 seconds, Dave and Martin and the other guys come out. And he went, and he's walking up towards me and I'm like, oh. and he just put his hand out and he went, I'm so sorry, mate. He said, just with everything going on, I'll be too careful. And then it was at that point when I knew I'm going to have to do something that is going to convince them because there's still that element of doubt. So they all started playing. There was a, Dave Lee Travis used to do this thing on Radio 2. He was a, a DJ on Radio 2 and he used to do this thing called Pop Black. And he would ask questions. And if you had a red ball, it was a one point question. And you'd answer the question, one point question, and they'd pop the ball. And then you'd pick a colour. So if you picked a yellow, it'd be two points. So it'd be a re relatively easy question. If you picked a black ball, which was seven points, it was a really hard question. And they turned it into an arcade game. So it was Dave Lee Travis's pot black game where they ask you questions. So you ask the red question and then you can choose the colours on the machine as to what you want to do to, in order to build your total up. And we all, they all started playing it for beers. Whoever gets the least points the, that gets the question wrong get, buys the beers. So they're playing it, they're playing it, they're playing it, and then it's my turn. So I get up and the question comes up and I stand there and I'm looking at it and I'm like, uh, um, uh, and they're all like, it's a red point question. It's really easy. I can't really remember what that question was, right? And I couldn't, I went, ah, fuck it. I'll just get the beers. And they're all like, so I went up, got the beers, sorted the beers out, came back. They went around the loop again. One of them got a question wrong. It was like, I mean, unbelievably easy, but he got it wrong. So he went and got the beers. Then it came to my turn again. And it came up and there was a red ball question and it was the gospel truth. This was the question. Who won the World Cup in 1966? Huh? England. Yes. Well, it wouldn't be New Zealand, would it? <laughs> so, no, it wouldn't be. <laughs> so I'm there and I'm looking at it and they were like, Jim, Jim, go on, answer it, answer it. I'm like, oh, fucking, uh, oh, fucking, uh. and they're like, and you can see them all looking at each other. Like, what the fuck is going on here? And then I just turned around and grabbed Chris by the throat and just go, oh, I can't fucking believe you've told him. I can't fucking believe it. Why have you fucking told him? You're fucking embarrassing me, all this sort of stuff. Chris has absolutely no idea what I'm doing here. Right? He's like, <laughs> I'm not fucking, and I'm like, fucking you can't, I can't fucking believe you've done that. And then let go of him. And then go, it ain't my fault. I can't read and write. Smart. Right. And they all went, oh, he hasn't told us. And I went, do you know what? I've had a fuck enough of you lot today. Why don't you all just fuck off? So I just walked out, walked out. So I'm out, I'm now outside the pub again, right? I'm the outside the pub bloke that day, right? So I'm outside the pub. Again, left him in there like, he's going to go, he can read. I don't know what's up with him. He can read and write. I don't know what his problem is. Oh, Chris. <laughs> but Chris didn't. Bless him. He just kept quiet. And they came out. And then they, all they did was apologise. And they went on about the fact that, you know, so sorry, we didn't know, we didn't need to put you in that thing. 
And I'm waiting then. We're now, we're now back in. We're all drinking. They're all, they've stopped playing the game. We've had three or four beers and we're now walking to the ground. And I'm waiting for somebody, please, for the fucking penny to drop. And it did. And one of them just went, fucking Dave, 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 fucking hell. Just think about it. You just accused him of being old Bill. He can't even read them fucking right. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah. And that was it. The... um. Millwall West Ham rivalries. Oh, mate, that was massive, right? You guys got drawn against Millwall for the Simod Cup. Simod Cup. I mean, talk me through. Talk me through why it's such a big rivalry, and then and then we'll get stuck into the day because it's big. People, people have been killed. We get off at Mile End and we start walking down the Mile End Road, which is now, and it's about it's early. It must have been about three o'clock, something like that. And there's about 150 of us. And we're walking down the Marlin Road. And I've not been West Ham before. So it's first first time. So I've heard of it. You know, we were going to Upton Park, as it was then, and we're walking down. And then all of a sudden you can see people starting coming out of shops and we're singing. No one likes us and doing all doing all the songs and all the bits and pieces. And then we came, and we came that we went dark and there was it was a good, yeah, a good hundred and fifty of us. And and then the police have like stopped trying to turn up and we because we've come really early mm. I look across the road and there's this geezer comes out of the kebab shop with the biggest fucking knife you've ever seen in your life honestly it was like you know those things when they cut the donut with yeah, yeah. Big, one of those fuckers like a machete right and I looked and went oh my fucking god and then all these vans started pulling up and people started coming out and it's, it was clear right that they was going to come on top and we'd gone from 150 to 120 to 100 to about, there was about a quarter of us of about 45, 50 left walking. Because people had slowly gone, fuck this, and slipped off. So we're singing. And I remember, <clears throat> and one thing you never do at football is run. You just don't run. You, don't, you just don't run. You just don't do it. You start to stand and you have the stand with wall and all that stuff. It's like that. It's, I've seen the geezer with the big knife and then I've seen and they've all started to come coming out of the vans and stuff. And I remember I looked, like, looked at them all like this, right? And then we all stopped and they went, stand me all. And I went, fuck that, run. And we all went, Dunk. everyone, mate, fucking everyone. Because we, we would have been absolutely, we would have had to cut, cut our fucking head off. Everyone just went, fuck that. And just went, chunk. Because we were well over, we were at that time, that was like feet or like, flee or flight. That was one of those, you're like, fuck, I'm off. Yeah. So we run. <clears throat> I've never run that fast in my life ever. It was absolutely. And about four of us. They're took, chasing after you as well. Yeah, but we've gone through this estate and we've gone and we end up in this chemist. I remember running into the chemist with Dave and Martin and Stu and all that and we're in there. And Dave's handing me, take this, take this. And I, at the time, I didn't even think about it. I'm standing there and I'm sitting like this with these two cans. Spray them, spray them. Like that, right? I'm going to wait. No one comes in. We're there for about 10 minutes. It's got all these old people in there collecting their prescriptions. And then like, the guy from the thing comes up and goes, I think, um, I don't think your friends are coming. I think, I think you, you can go now. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> and at that point, I look down and I've got two cans of silver cream. You know, that gold, it's like gold hairspray. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? I'm like, I went, what the fuck am I going to do with that? He went, I don't know. He said, I just handed you what, what I got. And I'm like, Oh, I suppose I could do their air. So we drew we drew Arsenal in the fourth round of the FA Cup, which um, was um, was, a, was a big thing. Uh, and then there was all the press speculating the week before the game that we were going to... So Arsenal used to play at Highbury and then obviously now at Emirates. But, uh, and they had the North Bank and the Clock End. So the Clock End was where all the visiting supporters went. So there was probably a week of the media saying that Millwall were going to nick the clock. So we were going to turn up and we were going to nick their clock. Um, which was, How big did you say the clock? It, the clock's fucking enormous, mate. You can, it's like not something you could stick under your arm and walk out with. It's like, you know, it'd be, it's going to be like, it'd, be, it'd take a number of you in some scaffold. You know, it's like, but, you know, whatever. We'll try and nick the clock. So it was good, it was good PR. They put good press, I suppose. And um, we turned up and we walked and then, Effectively, the 
um, as we were coming walking around, the the, uh, the landlord guy came around and went, "Where are you going?" And I went, well, "We just go." He went, "No, come with us." So I went, and I've seen there were guys that I've not seen before. You're at Highbury. So at Highbury, yeah. So we're walking, and we're at the North Bank, which is like the Arsenal away, end, uh, Arsenal home end. So I'm like, we're, we're in the queue. So I went, back then, you just you just turned up paid. So we're in the queue, and I'm thinking, fucking, we're in the queue. Like, so we walk, fuck, what's we going? Is he going to kick off in the queue? Gets the turnstile, pay our money, walk in. And fucking okay. So we walk in, start walking up the steps to the North Bank. I'm like, okay. Right, what's that? We get up. Anyway, we are now standing in the middle of 8,000 Arsenal. Surround, I'm surrounded by 14, 15 of the fucking proper, tastiest geezers I've ever seen. And there's me and From Chris. Millwall. And Chris, yeah. 15 of. 15 fucking top geezers, right? So top I'm geezers like, by like. Top, top top of the Millwall firm. Fucking man. geezers, right? So I, 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 most of which, I, apart from the landlord, I've not ever seen before. So I'm like, oh, fucking hell, right? So we're standing there and then the geezer is obviously clocked. I'm a little bit nervous, right? He went, son, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. He went, you'll be fine. He went, he had this leather coat on. Lift his ear, we went, stay by, by me. And he's got a six inch stiletto knife. Shit. Like this. So I'm like, oh my fucking God, I'm going to die. I thought, I mean, now, I'm now in the middle of the fucking North Bank with surrounded by fucking 8,000 Arsenal and the geezer's got a knife. So I'm like, I've got to tell my sergeant, I've got to go, we're in, fucking what are we going to do? So I remember I'm standing there like this and I went, Chris, 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 it's fucked off. <laughs> so I've turned around and he's gone. And I've looked up and he's walking up the terraces and I'll get to his, I'm going to give him his due. He's looked down at me. He's gone, fuck that. Like this, right? He's walked off. So I'm now standing there thinking, he's gone. He's bottled it. He's gone. And it's me and 15 of Millwall's finest. And whilst I'm contemplating what I'm going to do, they start singing No One Likes Us in the middle of 8,000 Arsenal. So they're not one likes us. No one likes us. And I'm like, no one likes us. Fucking, I'm going to die. And I have to finish it. And it, if people, people who have been to football when it's kicked off, where it's like this, suddenly there's this quite quiet moment before it all goes crazy. So it's like that if you, you know, if you go into battle or whatever, I don't know, but it's like, fortunately not to experience that. But it just went, and there was just this ring of people around us as we stopped singing. And then this guy, there's always one, starts, stepped out and starts running towards us. And he's running towards me, clearly because I'm the smallest. And I'm like, oh my Lord, I'm going to die. This is it. It's all on top. And just as he comes towards me, one of the guys just steps in front of me and just goes and hits this geezer straight on the fucking chin. So hard, it's like properly hard that he goes completely backwards and then just falls and as he falls down he just his head just because it was all just concrete terraces just cracks onto the concrete terrace oh. and everyone everyone including us just goes Ooh, like this and then as if by magic right this <laughs> the sort of crowd opened and then these two little guys come out and grabbed him by the ankles Pulled him back and the crowd opens. They pulled him back and the crowd just closes. It's just like something out of Ben Hur. They just like picked him up, pulled him. It's opened, it's closed, and then we're all standing there. And then all hell fucking broke loose. He just kicked off. And one thing that you learn very early on in that scenario is you fucking never go down. Do not go down. If you go down, you're fucked. You've got to stay up. So I'm now running, flailing. People screaming, people chasing me, people punching me. I'm kicking people. I'm doing this. I'm like, is it you're by yourself almost by the stage? Or everyone is in it, yeah. But you're by yourself because yeah. all your head is just like it's, you're not you just like got, some Roman army that's like organised. No, like we're not full on. No, script. We ain't no, we ain't centurions, mate. We are fucking at 
absolutely one or fucking the three musketeers we're like no one's one for one all for one. we're all fucking fighting for ourselves now so i spill out onto the pitch okay and no one's there i've got to the bottom and no one's followed me and i turn around and they're all fucking screaming and shouting at me and then i get nicked so all this is all this is going on you've got two mates that have been sussed out um you two are still undercover how do you get out of this situation so the operation concluded on a phone call so we were just sitting in the office or our, our house that we had and uh phone rang he answered it and he knew it was coming and he said oh right okay oh i let the guys know he went all oh, right okay well, really all oh, right fine and then he just turned around and went boys it's done we're, we're finished and i'm like what the fuck are you talking about? Done, finished what? He went, it's finished, the operation's over. So I'm like, well, what about all the evidence? He went, I don't know, he said they're just, they're just stopping it. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's yes. been a hell of a story. It's a pleasure. Hell of a story. And um, your book, Running With The Firm, you can get it wherever anyone sells any books. I got it from Amazon. Hell of a good read. Thanks very much. Cheers, chaps.